Division of Segments and Angles, Level 5. In this video, we will go over more challenging examples involving midpoints and segment bisectors. Let's take a look at the first example. Point E is the midpoint of segment DF. Find the value of x if the measurement of segment DE equals 2x minus 3 and the measurement of segment EF equals 5x minus 24. In this problem, we are provided with a graph of two line segments intersecting at a common point. We are given algebraic expressions for the lengths of two line segments. We are asked to find the value of x. Let's start by marking the diagram with the given information. We know that point E is the midpoint of segment DF. This means that segment DE and segment EF are congruent. So we mark these two segments with a single tick mark. We also know that the length of segment DE equals 2x minus 3 and the length of segment EF equals 5x minus 24. Since we know that both segment DE and segment EF are congruent, we can go ahead and set these two algebraic expressions equal to one another. Now we have an equation for which we can solve for x. So we subtract 2x from both sides of the equation. Then we add 24 to both sides of the equation. Lastly, we divide both sides of the equation by 3. Simplifying the expression, we obtain x equals 7 as the final answer. Alright, let's take a look at the next example. Given that line TP bisects segment VS and segment MR, segment VM is congruent to segment SR, the length of segment MP is equal to 9, the length of segment VT is equal to 6. The perimeter of figure MRSV is equal to 62. Find the length of segment VM. In this problem, we are provided with a diagram of a figure, along with various geometric relations. We are asked to find the length of a particular segment. We will start solving this problem by marking the diagram with all the given information. This will help plan our approach in solving this problem. We know that line TP bisects segment VS and segment MR. So we can go ahead and draw single tick marks on segment VT and segment TS. And double tick marks on segment MP and segment PR, since these two pairs of segments are congruent to one another. In addition, we are also given that segment VM is congruent to segment SR. So we will use triple tick marks to illustrate this on the diagram. Next, we go ahead and label the measurement of segment MP and label the measurement of segment VT. In this case, they are equal to 9 and 6 respectively. Lastly, we can write a geometric expression for the perimeter of the figure. In this case, segment VM plus segment MR plus segment RS plus segment SV is equal to 62. Now let's figure out how we can determine the length of segment VM. We will start by assigning a variable to our unknown length. So let's label the length of segment VM with the variable x. Since segment SR is congruent to segment VM, we can also label this length with the variable x. We also know that the length of segment PR is equal to 9, since it is congruent to segment MP. Similarly, we also know that the length of segment TS is equal to 6, since it is congruent to segment VT. Now we can take all of these measurements and substitute them into our perimeter expression. So we replace the length of segment VM and segment SR with x, and replace the length of segment VS and MR with 12 and 18 respectively. Now it is just a matter of solving for x, so we collect like terms, subtract the constant, and divide both sides of the equation by 2. Doing that, and simplifying, we obtain x equals 16. Since this value of x also represents the length of segment VM, we are essentially done with the problem.
So this is our final answer. All right, let's end the video with a final example. Given the diagram, find the value of x. Determine if point Q is the midpoint of segment PR. In this problem, we are provided with a diagram of a line segment broken into two smaller line segments. We are also given the measurement of line segment PR and algebraic expressions representing the measurement of the smaller line segments. We are asked to determine the value of x and determine if point Q is a midpoint of segment PR. Let's start by determining the value of x. Notice that we have expressions for the measurement of all three line segments. We also know from the diagram that point P, Q, and R are collinear. This also allows us to set up the following geometric relation. The length of segment PQ plus the length of segment QR is equal to the length of segment PR. We can now substitute the algebraic and numerical expressions into this geometric relation. Doing that, we obtain the following equation. From here, it is just a matter of solving for x. Notice that we are face to face with a quadratic equation. So let's move every single term to one side of the equation so that we can set the equation equal to zero, making sure we add like terms along the way. We also want to write the quadratic equation in standard form. Next, we need to see if this quadratic expression is factorable. So we use the factors of the constant term, in this case 4 and negative 2, and use them to set up two binomials. In this case, the quantity x plus 4 times the quantity x minus 2. Having factored the quadratic expression, we go ahead and use the zero product property and set each factor equal to zero. We then solve for x for each factor. Doing that, we obtain x equals negative 4 and x equals positive 2. Now we need to figure out if we can use both of these solutions. We can figure this out by substituting each value of x into the algebraic expression representing the two smaller line segments. If we obtain positive measurements, then we will know that it is a solution to the problem. If we obtain negative measurements, we need to eliminate the value of x, since measurements must be positive and not negative. Let's first substitute negative 4 into each algebraic expression and simplify. Notice that the measurement of segment QR ends up being negative. So we have to discard negative 4 as a potential solution. Now let's substitute positive 2 into each algebraic expression and simplify. In this case, we obtain positive measurements. So let's use this value of x to finish the problem. We need to determine if point Q is the midpoint of segment PR. This will be the case if the measurement of segment PQ is equal to the measurement of segment QR. Looking at the measurements for each segment when x equals positive 2, we conclude that point Q is not the midpoint of segment PR since both measurements are not equal. And this is our final answer. All right, in our next video, we will go over examples that involve adjacent angles, angle bisectors, and angle trisectors.